Lesson 11.1 is an introduction to periodic functions. Periodic functions are functions where there's a repeating pattern of identical y values. So for example, down here, we have this pattern here, this wave pattern that continues the same exact pattern over and over in either direction. And same thing with this one here. The period is the length of the shortest interval for a repeat. So basically how long it takes for one of those patterns to happen. Two examples of periodic functions are functions we call sinusoidal functions, which is f of x is equal to sine of x, and f of x is equal to cosine of x. So this is f of x is equal to sine of x, and then this is f of x is equal to cosine of x. So for sine of x, sine starts at its middle or its equilibrium point. It goes up to its maximum, comes back down, goes down to its minimum, and comes back to its equilibrium. So that's one pattern. And the time it takes for one pattern to happen is 360, basically one full lap around the circle for it to start to repeat. Similarly with cosine, cosine though starts at its maximum, goes down to its minimum, back up to its maximum value, and it also takes 360 degrees for cosine to repeat. So the period for cosine is also 360 degrees. For this first example, we're going to be looking at a Ferris wheel. For this Ferris wheel, the radius is 70 meters, and theta represents the angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So we're looking at a position of a specific pod, for example, that's going to have a horizontal distance that we're going to call x and a vertical distance that we can call y. So for the first one, we want to find the angle where the distance is of this pod is 40 meters vertically above the x-axis. So we can draw in our right triangle where our vertical distance is 40 and our hypotenuse or our radius is 70, and we want to find that angle. So if we think back to our triangle trig, we can use Sokotoa to help us figure out what our angle theta is going to be. We have opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be sine of theta. So we have sine of theta is equal to 40 over 70. So then to find the angle theta, we can take the sine inverse of 40 over 70, and you end up with 34.8 degrees. However, there's another place where your Ferris wheel pod is also going to be 40 meters above the x-axis, and that's going to be on the opposite side, so kind of this reflection. So we also want to find that angle. We want to find the angle, and we're still measuring from the positive x-axis, so we want to find this blue angle that I'm going to call theta 2. Well, we know these two triangles that we have here are congruent, so that angle that we just found, the 34.8 degrees, is the same thing as this angle inside, uh, with the negative x-axis. So then if we want to find the blue angle, because we're always measuring from the positive x-axis, then these two are just supplementary to each other. So I just said 180 degrees minus the angle we just found, so the second angle would be 145 degrees. The other way that you could have done this is you could have used um, your graphing calculator and put y1 to be sine of x and y2 to be 4 over 7 or 40 over 70 and found where they intersect and you would have found both of these two angles. So now we want to do the same thing, but now we want the distance to be 20 meters horizontally from the y-axis. So pause the video and try that. So I did the same thing, but since now we have the horizontal distance, that would be our adjacent to theta. So I used cosine. So cosine of theta is 20 over 70. So therefore, theta is cosine inverse of 20 over 70, or 73.4 degrees. But again, there's a second place that you're horizontally 20 meters away from the x-axis. And that would be down here at the bottom. So I wanted to find this second blue angle, theta 2. And again, we have congruent triangles here where inside this blue triangle is the same as inside the red triangle. So the whole circle is 360 degrees, and we don't want 73.4. So therefore, our second angle is 287 degrees. Again, the other way you could have done this is gone into y equals, set y1 equal to cosine of theta, y2 equal to 20 over 70, and then find where they intersect. So now we have some just solving trig equations. So we're just going to use our graphing calculator. We're going to go into y equals, put one side of the equation under y1, the second side of the equation under y2, adjust your window. So they want all answers between 0 and 360 degrees. So that's going to be your x's. And then your y's, sine and cosine, have a range of between 1 and negative 1. So you'll want the y's to go between there. Um, and then go to second trace, which is calc, go to number five, which is intersect, and find the solutions. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So just using my graphing calculator, I found that the two places where sine of theta and two cosine of theta intersect are 63.4 degrees and 243 degrees. 
the two places that sine of theta is equal to negative 0 0.3 would be at 197 degrees and 343 degrees. And then the two places that cosine is equal to 0 0.75 would be 41.4 degrees and 319 degrees. So last modeling with uh, sinusoidal functions. So for a certain town in Alaska, the function L is equal to negative 6.97 cosine 72 over 73D plus 12.45 models the amount of daylight L in hours on the dth day of the year. So for part A, we want to predict the amount of daylight on March 1st, which, assuming it's not leap year, is the 60th day of the year. And we also want to predict when there will be 17.5 hours of daylight, which day. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So for the first one, the gave, they gave us the amount of daylight, which is D, so I plug that 60 in for D, and I just plug that in my calculator, and you end up with 8.88 hours, or 8 hours and 53 minutes. And then for part B, they gave us the amount of daylight, so that's L, so I plugged in 17.5 in for L, and I just used my graphing calculator, and I found it was the 138th day, which is May 18th, and the 227th day, which is August 15th. So this has been an introduction to sinusoidal functions, so sine of x and cosine of x, which are both periodic functions, which means they repeat over time.